Leakage power dissipation grows with every generation of CMOS process technology. This leakage power is not only a serious challenge to battery powered or portable products, but increasingly an issue that has to be addressed in third third equipment such as servers, routers, and set up boxes. To reduce the overall leakage power of the chip, it is highly desirable to add mechanisms to turn off plugs that are not being used. This technique is known as power gating. During operation circuits, we waste energy. There are three major causes of power dissipation in integrated circuits. Dynamic power consumption, which is caused by diabetic charging and discharging of capacitance, usually parasitic. Static power consumption, which corresponds to the non-zero current of transistors in off-state in digital circuits or deviation current in their analog counterparts. Short circuit power consumption, caused by crowbar current flowing during the lapse of time when both PMOS and NMOS transistors are in the on state. Possible solutions. There are two main ways. Structural techniques and dynamic techniques. The basic strategy of power gating is to provide two power modes, a low power mode and an active mode. The goal is to switch between these modes at the appropriate time and in the appropriate manner to maximize power savings while minimizing the impact to performance. Leakage power is now more than switching power, so it's really important to focus on this. Power gating is one of the most effective ways of minimizing leakage power. Now we are going to show how the gating power is implemented. It is important to know that this technique can be performed in two ways. Footer way using NMOS and header way using PMOS, both having the same applications. In the next slides, we are going to explain how power gating works and which are its modes. Basically, with power gating, we will use a transistor as an interrupter. In the slip mode, we would have an open circuit, and in normal mode, we'd have a short circuit. To reduce the performance degradation, the voltage drop across a slip transistor should be minimized to reduce active leakage current, requires sizing up of footer device. During the slip mode, all of the internal capacitive nodes and BGND nodes are charged up to near BDD, requires sizing down of footer device to reduce standby leakage. When the slip transistor is turned on, the maximum instant current can flow, requires sizing up of footer device. Advantages Battery life Cost of packing and cooling Reliability and performance degradation Slower liquid circuits at high temperatures, higher rate of electron migration, etc. More fetters being integrated on a smaller area. Leakage power may soon become the dominating part of total power consumption. Drawbacks Power gate size The power gate size must be selected to handle the amount of switching correct at any given time. The gate must be bigger such that there is no measurable voltage drop due to the gate. As a rule of thumb, the gate size is selected to be around three times the switching capacitance. Designers can also choose between header, PMOS, or footer, NMOS gate. Usually footer gates tend to be smaller in area for the same switching current. Dynamic power analysis tools can accurately measure the switching current and also predict the size for the power gate. Gate control slip rate. In power gating, this is an important parameter that determines the power gating efficiency. When the slip rate is large, it makes more time to switch off and switch on the shrinking and ends can affect the power gating efficiency. Slip rate is controlled through buffering the gate control signal. Simultaneous switching capacitance. This important constraint refers to the amount of circuit that can be switched simultaneously without affecting the power network integrity. If a large amount of the circuit is switched simultaneously, the resulting rush current can compromise the power network integrity. The circuits need to be switched in stage in order to prevent this. This figure shows an example activity profile for a subsystem using clock gating to reduce power. This figure shows an example activity profile for the same subsystem with basic power gating implement. The response time between the wake event and having clocks running may be significant and cannot be ignored at the system design level. 
This last figure shows that the leakage power savings are not perfect and instantaneous. The full leakage power saving takes some time to reach target levels. This is due to partly to the thermal profile of the preceding activity and partly to the non-ideal nature of the power gating technology. Therefore, the archival savings are compromised to some extent. Once we have understood the importance of this slide, it is really easy to get graphically the practical meaning of what we explained it before. In other words, thanks to those plots, we can deeply understand the last purpose of it. Power gating is a technique for saving leakage power by shutting off the idle blocks. Experimental results show that by compromising 4% of the total area and 5% of the dynamic power, we can achieve 47% leakage power saving while maintaining the same performance. With technology scaling down, the saving is significant. We conclude that we can benefit from the power gating technique in future technology nodes.